The YouTube team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to talk about the game that we all watched together for the second half. I know the first half, we weren't able to catch it live. But I did just go back and watch the first half of that Ravens and Giants game. And oh, what a game it was. Um, shout out to the Giants. Shout out to the Giants. I know I've seen a lot of Ravens fans trying to discredit the Giants. Oh, well, the Ravens, we beat ourselves. And, da -da -da -da. and the Ravens, of course, they have their self-inflicted wounds. Um, but the Giants won. They took advantage of those wounds. They exposed some of those wounds. And they got the W. So they are sitting at 5-1 and one, while the Ravens are 3-3. Three and three. Um, Appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Uh, we... Positive news, we just crossed 59,000 subscribers, so that's good, right? But um, I know it's uh, <laughs> not many positives to take from this game. Well, there are some, um, but anyway, let's just get into it. So, uh, overall, this team, before we get into the specifics of what I saw, um, this team is just very, very undisciplined. They are such an undisciplined team. They, 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 they lack discipline in a major way, and it shows a lot. Um, this game throughout, throughout the entire game, stupid penalties. Stupid penalties. Now, there, there was the passing offense on Marcus Peters. I don't think that was P.I., so excluding that one. But there was some just bad penalties. The all the, the false starts. I think really, I think on the first drive, they had like two, three false starts alone. And it's just like, man, why do you do this to yourself? Um, the Ravens had got a stop, I believe. They got a stop on third and short. Um, and then the whole thing with Adafi away, he grabbed the Giants player's helmet and was holding it up in the air, swinging it around, and then put it on the ground and gave it a little kick. And I'm like, that's like, and I know these, a lot of these guys are so young. I know, and now I get it. It's the heat of the moment. So they might do little petty stuff like that towards one another. Maybe somebody might have did something to Adafi away earlier. I, I don't know. But they can't afford stuff like that. A.J. Klein, his very first game active. Um, it was on a punt. On a punt. The, the punt returner, he was out of bounds. A.J. Klein, wax him. 15 yards. That's 15 yards. That's a lot of yards. And the Giants, it ain't like they were moving the ball like crazy. The Adafi away with the helmet and then the little kick, 15 yards. That gives them yards. And then, of course, all the false starts, that takes away yards from you. So this team, they, um, they are just very undisciplined. Uh, this team, they also, they don't know who they are. We don't know who they are. Y'all have uh, heard me say it. Um, I said that with the Baltimore Ravens, I said it, it's going to take like maybe three, four, even maybe even after week five. That's when we should really know who these Baltimore Ravens are. We still don't. We still don't. We don't do not know who this team is. Um, another thing, too. Yet again, another lead blown. Just another one. They were up big on the Dolphins. They were up significantly on the Bills. Not the biggest lead. Uh, and they were up multiple scores on the Giants. All three losses. And then now, now the stat the stat went from, I think, the Ravens were only trailing from 14, for 14 seconds this season. And now I think the stat is the Ravens have been trailing for 120 seconds this season. Only 120 seconds all season. And they're 3-3. Three and three. So they've been trailing... For two minutes all season and are sitting at three and three. This team. Now, you know what? I guess I got to take this back. I, I got to take back saying that they don't have an identity because they do. They're, they're not disciplined. They're not disciplined. They're a team that's not disciplined. They are very inconsistent when it comes to, to finishing the job, to closing it out. Um, they, it's, it's been rough, man. It has been really rough, uh, but they it's like they can't get out of their own way. They can't get it out of their own way. Um, and that's one thing that you see over and over and over and over. And something's got to give. Um, we'll start with defense. I know offense. I know everybody, 
right, right. We're going to talk about offense. Don't worry. Um, defense. What I saw, especially in the first half, in a lot of second half too, but I saw where the defense first down, hey, shut it down. Let's go, baby. Second down, hey, shut it down. Let's go, baby. But there would be these, in the crucial moments, the clutch plays where you got to get off the field, defense would give up a first down. And that was really, uh, really throughout, really throughout uh, the game. Um, that just, that, that kept happening. Um, there was one drive. Was it the penalty? I think it was. It was the one where they had, it, it was going to be fourth and two. They were, they were in field goal range, but it was going to be like fourth and two or four. It was going to be fourth and something. Uh, but they had the Ravens had an option to either accept the penalty or decline it. Harbaugh accepted it, which was smart because it pushed them back. It, it pushed the, the Giants back, um, took them out of field goal range. So it was like, all right, cool. The, the, it's like third and 16 at that point, something like that. Um, so, all, like, it's Ravens defense. Yeah, you know, we know they struggle from time to time, but it's Daniel Jones. It's Ravens defense, Ravens corner, Ravens secondary. It's Daniel Jones and that offense. What receivers do they even have? And all you got to do is get a stop. Even if you they get a completion, you tackle them short, cool. They 16 yards or 15, however long it was, it was long. But it's like, no, you ain't got to worry about that. Except the penalty, that was a smart move by John Harbaugh. Make them play another, because he backed them up. He didn't want them to get a field goal. So rather no points than possible points. But anyway, um, Daniel Jones drops back, first down. And it was on Marlon Humphrey. Um, I forget which receiver it was. If it was one Rundell, one Dale Robinson, I forget his name, or it was Marcus John. I, I don't remember which receiver it was. But they they beat Mar uh, Marlon Humphrey. Well, it kind of looked like they were like in zone a little bit, but it was in Marlon Humphrey's area, uh, and he gave up a first down. And I'm like, man, just watching it. Because, again, I didn't get to watch that part because that was in the first half live. And watching I'm like, man. I'm getting, I, it was like I was getting frustrated watching it, and I already knew what the outcome of the game was going to be, but I, I was still getting frustrated watching it. Um, but anyway, uh, you just you, you, you kept seeing stuff like that. I remember, um, and I mean, it was, it was still a good play regardless, but I didn't have the context. I remember when I first started streaming, and somebody was like, hey, Patrick Queen, he forced a fumble. I was like, oh, really? And Chuck Clark recovered. I was like, oh, okay, let's go, man. And then I watched the replay of the game, and I was like, oh, that was the situation that it was in. Because I was thinking, like, it happened maybe if Saquon Barkley was carrying the ball, Patrick Queen punched it out or something like that, or maybe a tight end or receiver caught it and Patrick Queen punched it out. But it, it came with Daniel Jones when he was holding the ball for forever, uh, trying to do a Hail Mary. Now, and with that, um, the pass rush, same old stuff. Uh, we ain't really got to talk about it because it really was nothing. I mean, the first play of the game, Travis Jones, he came through and got the sack. Um, and then there was another play in the third or fourth quarter with Calais Campbell where he got the sack. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it was just a lot of the same stuff. Daniel Jones was doing a very good job of, of being decisive. He knew where he wanted to go with the ball. He got the ball out pretty quick. Got the ball out pretty quick. Uh, for the most part, the Giants offense, they, they set him up. They, they put him in a good position to where he has some short routes. It's like, all right. And there was, I don't think they got anything deep. I don't think they got anything at all deep at like not one play. I don't believe. So they took what the Ravens were giving them. They took all the short stuff and, and it worked. It worked. And what's crazy, like for the most part, the Ravens, they were holding. My biggest concern going into this game was, all right, Ravens, if they could hold down Saquon Barkley, they'll be straight. For the most part, they were. For the most part, they were. Um, but boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> uh, see, because look, like you, you see his, his rushing numbers. You see 22 carries, 83 yards. But he only averaged 3.8 yards per carry. That's it. Saquon Barkley, the guy who was leading the league in scrimmage yards. He only averaged eight point. I'm, no, not average eight point. Average three point eight yards per carry. Ravens were doing a good job for the most part on Saquon Barkley, but on defense, for me, I think it was just the the fact that they they could not get off the field at crucial times. Um, and Ravens also sometimes where they just they look confused on defense. They look like just they don't. Sometimes they just don't know what's going on on both touchdowns. 
Like, it's one thing if a receiver, if he mosses somebody, all right, hey, you just got mossed straight up. You got beat. It's one thing if a receiver, he hits you with a nasty route. You thought he was going to the right. He went to the left or vice versa, whatever it may be. That's one thing if you just straight up get beat. But if guys are wide open, wide open, what's that? The touchdown to, um, was it Seals? Uh, it was either number 13 or number 17. On the uh, Giants. Literally wide open in the flat. Wide open. Untouched. Nobody there. He, he, I mean, he was so open. He almost stumbled out of bounds at the one yard line. He was so open. Nobody was there. Nobody. At all. And I, I was like, wow. Then the touchdown to the tight end. Um, Josh Bynes just got caught slipping. And it was a great play by the tight end and a great throw by Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones had actually thrown a touchdown early in the first half where Marcus Peters just got beat. He got beat uh, by the wide receiver running in the back of the end zone. He got beat, but the receiver, Daniel Jones put it on the money. The receiver just bobbled it. Then Marcus Peters, he ain't even realized the receiver bobbled it like that. Then he bobbled it. And then Geno Stone came and whack. Came and whack Marcus Peters. But he was trying to hit the receiver but anyway um so that, that could have been another touchdown but thank goodness it wasn't um but yeah man the tight end he josh Bynes, they went zone they went zone and i know a lot of ravens fans have been complaining about uh the ravens playing zone saying hey they need to be a man they're a man team they need to start with his own stuff and then sometimes i wonder like when when they play zone i wonder if that's to try to um sort of help out the young cornerbacks because the young cornerbacks have they've had their issues uh in this first six games of the season. Um uh, so I wonder if it's to try to sort of help them out, try to help put them in better positions or whatnot. I, I, but I don't know. Um but anyway, um they were in zone and Josh Bynes, he was the tight end was coming across the middle and there was a receiver that was going up top. Josh Bynes got caught slipping. He started, wide, he started following the receiver that was going behind him. So he turned around while the tight end is in front of him. And then by the time he turned back around, and, and it was it, the, the tight end was going past Josh Bynes' zone, and it was right before he got to Marlon Humphrey's zone. Daniel Jones put it on the money. Tight end caught it. Boom. Touchdown. Great play. Um, and then just uh, that, that last – drive of the game just again this is just about defense right now we're going to get to offense now but then that, that last drive of the game Saquon Barkley that dude but y'all remember when Marshawn Lynch when Marshawn Lynch shook both Ray Lewis and Jared Johnson at the same time that that's what that Saquon Barkley spin move reminded me of it, and and that shows you how realistic Madden is because you press circle and Madden they do some crazy spin at least Madden last year Maybe not so much Madden this year, but Madden last year, you press circle. And for the past couple years before this year, you press circle, they do crazy spins. It's like, whoa, come on. Is that realistic? Saquon Barkley showed you it is realistic. That dude hit the nastiest spin move um, to end the game and then ran for the first down. Could have got a touchdown, but he just ran for the first down. Um, the guy is amazing. He is amazing. Uh, but that was... Um, that was their offense versus uh, Ravens defense. And just looking at the numbers, the, the numbers are not anything crazy. Daniel Jones, in a good context, is everything. So, but 19 for 27, 173 yards, two, two touchdowns, no picks. Two touchdowns, no picks. And I don't even remember any almost interceptions or anything like that. Two touchdowns, no picks. Uh, so, hey, he wasn't throwing all over the place. But when it mattered the most, he came through, made some big time throws, some clutch throws, and it, it worked out. Again, back to Saquon Barkley, uh, 83 yards, average 3.8 yards per carry. Matt Breida had three rushes for negative six yards. Three rushes for negative six yards. Their highest, the leading receiver had 38 rec receiving yards. Did have him a touchdown? <laughs> Uh, and their second leading receiver also had, he had 37 yards and he had him a touchdown too. But the longest re receptions of the game were for 18 yards, 18 yards, and 17 yards. So that was that. Um, so anyway, like numbers wise, you look at 
what the Ravens defense did overall in terms of yards. And you think, oh, man, wow, like they, they did pretty good. But then if you look at the actual game, while they didn't give up big yards, they gave up big plays. And not necessarily big. When I say big plays, I don't mean long plays, but crucial plays, clutch plays. So that was that. Um, now, special teams. Oof. Whenever Justin Tucker misses a field goal, that's how you know things are bad. You know things are bad. Justin Tucker missed that field goal. That thing said, "Dong." I felt like the field goal post was gonna break, but um, that was rough. Then the Ravens they gave up a huge kick return to that running back, and it looked like that well, the running whatever position he plays, the kick returner for the Giants. It looked like he was in a game of Madden. The way he was shaking people and breaking people, I said, "Man, this dude looking like a ninety-nine right now." And the Ravens all looking like overalls thirty-eights. Oh, uh, he he was doing his thing. So I said, "Oh boy." Um, and then on special teams, there was one return. Jordan Stout, he punted one out of the back of the end zone. We're like, okay, cool, whatever. It happened. No big deal. But there was on one return where Tylen Wallace, he got a penalty. And again, another, the, the penalties. The penalties by the Ravens. Undisciplined team. So that was just rough. Um, but anyway, offense. Man, offense. Uh, where do we start? J.K. Dobbins, what did J.K. Dobbins have, like, two carries? Now, I, I ain't tripping off of that because, one, we know the field. He, oh, I was reading it wrong. J.K. Dobbins had seven carries? Man, I thought the most he had was, like, maybe, like, four, maybe five? I just, I, I don't, I ain't feel like we saw J.K. Dobbins that much. But I'm not complaining because of two reasons. The number one reason is because we know that turf, we know that field. It's, it's nasty. A lot of injuries happen there. So, all right, hey, J.K.'s here for the long haul. But I did hear that he was having some issues. He was having some health issues. So, with his knee, with some, I forgot exactly what it was. So, hopefully it's nothing. But this week, we'll find out. Um, but my, my bigger reason that I'm not mad at all, I was not mad at all that J.K. Dobbins was not getting carries like that is because Kenyon Drake was going off. Kenyon Drake was the hot hand. And... For a while, they kept feeding the hot hand, and uh, that, that's what you're supposed to do. So that was a good thing. We talked about earlier, there weren't many positives. There were some positives in this game, for sure. But you feed the hot hand. You continue to go to the hot hand. Kenyon Drake was breaking him. Kenyon Drake was finding his lanes. Kenyon Drake was doing his thing. And I feel like in this game, for once, the run blocking was better than the pass blocking. Usually this season has been the other way around, but in this game... That's how it was. Kenyon Drake had 10 carries for 119 yards, average 11.9 yards a carry. And, of course, had that 30-yard touchdown, which was beautiful. It was beautiful. And he, he was just making it look easy today. Now, I know there was some very questionable play calling um, in where the Ravens got to the five-yard line. I forgot what quarter and what drive it was, but they got to the five-yard line. Um, after Kenyon Drake, he'd been doing his thing Like, alright, Jersey, we see you, baby Um and Then they didn't run the ball not one time They didn't run the ball not one time And in this game, man Pressure all game long People in Lamar's face All game long All game long Now, um, with Lamar Jackson Uh, there was a little bit of the overthrows That continued um, there was one where Mark Andrews had beat his guy deep and Lamar, he just sailed it. He sailed it. Um, so we, of course, we remember last week against the Bengals, though, those two overthrows that he had or three, 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 um, two touchdown overthrows, but the one to Demarcus Robinson, but the one to Mark Andrews today, he just sailed it. And I'm like, oh, and then, um, there was, there were two passes that I remember for both for Devin Duvernay. One was in the end zone where it was a little short, and one was on a third down where it was a little short. Uh, on the third down where it was short, that, that one got tipped, though. Uh, that one got tipped uh, by one of the uh, Giants defenders. And then the one in the end zone where Lamar just ain't put enough on it, he was having a backpedal. Why? Because he had all these people in his face. He's like, oh, hey, Giants defenders, you guys back here again? Hey, well, welcome. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then... There was, um, man, well, shout out to that the touchdown that he did throw to Mark Andrews, which it actually shouldn't have even been a play because they, like, 
the clock, the play clock hits zero. And I know the play clock that we see on TV is different from the play clock that's actually at the, the, the stadiums. But still, it was like that play clock was on zero for like two seconds. It was at zero. Then Raven's still sitting there. They sitting there chilling, still looking around. It hit negative one. Then it went to negative two. Then the right set. Then he snapped the ball. <laughs> like, man. Ooh. You got okie doked on that one. They threw the touchdown to Mark Andrews on that play. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Now, the um the pass that initially I thought Mark Andrews just dropped it. I thought he dropped. Now there was one drop that he had uh in the first half. Well Lamar initially when I was watching it, when I was rewatching the first half, I um I thought, man, did Lamar throw a bad pass on that one? But then I saw the replay, and it wasn't a bad pass. It wasn't too high. Lamar put it on the money. Mark Andrews ain't even had to jump for it. He just had to reach his hands up and get it. He reached his hands up, but <laughs> ball went straight through them hands. Um, but on the pass on the pass in the end zone that I thought Mark Andrews initially dropped when I watched it live, I was watching the replay again, and the, uh, the Giants defender, they, they tipped that pass too. Um, you know what? Going to let's fast forward to the end of the game. Those the two Lamar plays. Um, the interception. The first it, it was a bad snap. Linda Baum snapped it like way to the right. Uh, Lamar went to go chase, and this is on third and I want to say it was third and six. It was it was third down, whatever the down and distance was. It was like third and five or third and six, third and four, whatever. But it was third down. Um, so it's a bad snap. It's a little to the right. Uh, Lamar goes to chase it. Picks it up. Does a good job of that. I said, okay. And then he throws it to one of his top wide receivers, Patrick Ricard. Throws to Patrick Ricard and love. Um, I think he was number 20 because he, 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 he reminded me of a different number 20 that used to play for the Ravens going in the Hall of Fame on that play. The way that he read, reacted, jumped the, the, jumped the, uh, the route. Or oh, not even the route. He just, yeah, he jumped that throw. Um... That was a, a bad move by Lamar. And because live, when they sh I saw it live, and then when they showed the replay, I was like, okay, Lamar, he saw Pat Ricard, he threw the Pat Ricard. Now, if the defender wouldn't have been there, then Pat Ricard, he's catching that first down. Cool. The drive stays alive. But <laughs> Love was not the only Giants player that was over there. It was two Giants players over there. So that was just, it was just a bad decision by Lamar Jackson. And see, with that, with, with Lamar Jackson, and we were talking about this after the game, um, with the, those plays like that, there have been so many times where he has made those plays like that. So he has the confidence in himself. Oh, I could just make another one. And Ravens were up then. They were up 20 to 17. But with that, it's like no, recognize the situation. And, of course, with, with football, it's, you, got, you got to be quick. You got to be quick. You got to think on your feet. Things are happening in a split second. So you don't necessarily have all this time to sit there and process and go through every single thing. But if you see two Giants players there and only one of your guys there and, and that one guy is a fullback, yeah, uh, I don't know about that one. Throw it away. Get rid of it. And just got to just trust your defense. Throw the ball away. That's it. So uh, that was on Lamar. Amazing play from Love, from the Giants. Amazing play from him. That just a great play, a bad play from uh, Lamar. Now, um, on the other play, on the, the following draft, um, where the Ravens needed a touchdown to win because the Giants, they they took that Lamar interception. Love ran it back for a nice little chunk of yards. I thought it was going to be a pick six, but he ran it back for a chunk of yards, and Giants ended up getting a touchdown. But on the following play, so Ravens were down by four. So, yeah, they needed a touchdown to get the win. It was a minute 43 seconds left. I think it was the first play. From jump, Kayvon Thibodeau, he beat Patrick McCary from jump. Like, <laughs> literally from jump. Uh, Lamar, he had, he, he had about three seconds with the ball. And that was it. He had three seconds. Um, and Kayvon Thibodeau. This is how I he this is how I know he's very smart and he pays attention because he beat Patrick McCarry and he went knocked the ball out of Lamar's hands perfectly perfect play from him see why a lot of Raven fans wanted to draft him well perfect play from him knocked it out of Lamar's hands but I when I was watching the re, the replay of the first half from from cause since I didn't get to see it live when I was watching that there was a Lamar run 
And where Lamar, he broke for a long one. And Kayvon Thibodeau, he kind of went for him, but more so he was just watching Lamar. He was watching him. And in my opinion, what I think he was doing, which would be very smart, I think he was watching how Lamar was holding the ball. And I think he was thinking like, man, if I see him do that again, if I see him hold the ball like that again, I got an opportunity to knock that ball out. I got an opportunity to knock it out of there. Because on that big Lamar run, just watch, watch it for yourself. Let me know if you agree or disagree. You think I'm overthinking it or underthinking, whatever. But that's what it looked like to me. It looked like Kayvon Thibodeau was watching Lamar extra close on that big run that he broke in the first half. And he was looking like, oh, yeah, yeah. If he, he does that again, I got it. And while he didn't knock it out on from Lamar doing a big run, Lamar was in the pocket, but he beat his guy and saw Lamar holding that ball up. Pow! Knocked it right out. Game over. Game winning play right there. So shout out to uh to Thibodeau, man. I know Giants fans have been waiting on him. I, and they Giants, that pass rush is something serious, man. What corners do they have? What corners do they have? So, yeah, man. Um, so definitely uh not Lamar's best game, not his worst, um, but not his best. But again, that 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 clutch play. And I, I saw people say, "Oh, Lamar's not clutch. He's a uh, he's a oh he's a choker." But I'm like, what? Did we all forget last week? Did last week not happen? What what happened to that game? But anyway, I mean, you know how people are. But yeah, man, this uh, tough game all around. Uh, Mark Andrews, even with the, the drop that he had, uh, not the one in the end zone because that wasn't a drop because the defender tipped it, but even with the drop that he had in the first half, the dude is amazing, man. He is amazing. Um, he just continues to be amazing. I was hoping I was hoping that Mark Andrews was going to get a little extra jealous of Travis Kelsey from the other night where Travis Kelsey got like four touchdowns. And I was like, all right, Mark Andrews, you know what you got to do next game. But... It ain't end up uh, happening. Um, but Mark Andrews, let me see his numbers exactly. He had seven catches for 106 yards uh, and the touchdown. So, yeah, he, he he did his thing, but didn't have any contributions from anybody else. Um, Isaiah Likely, uh, he had that big catch, uh, a big catch in the first half. Um Demarcus Robinson. Oh, Demarcus Robinson. He had three catches for 27 yards. And then, like, I didn't even remember the other catches. Oh, I think one of them came, like, early in the first quarter. Like, sort of on, like, a screenplay. Uh, Lamar threw it to him. Demarcus Robinson caught it. The cornerback in front of him fell down. But Demarcus Robinson, he was doing all this, and he fell down, too. So. <laughs> like, he, he ended up, that could have been, like, 10, 20, 30, but it ended up being, like, Two, three yards at the most, I think. Um, but on that last drive, well, second to last drive, uh, Demarcus Robinson ran a quick little inside slant. Lamar hit him. Demarcus Robinson said, blah, 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 and dropped it. He dropped it. And I was like, oof, man. That hurt my heart. I, I, was, I was so frustrated. I was so frustrated, man. Oh, it, it, it was just, I was like, man. Um, Josh Oliver had two catches. Uh, both of his catches, they got challenged or reviewed or whatever. One of them were really nice one-hand catch. All right, Josh, we see you. Nick Boyle still like, what are we, what are we doing? Um, I think he played, what did he play, like two, three snaps? I don't know, but none, like, what? I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what to say about Nick Boyle. Um Devin Duvernay, he had the one catch, uh, 14 yards. He did have five targets. Um, again, one of them was tipped. Uh, one of them, one of them was tipped. Uh, that was the one that was on third down. Uh, one of them was short. Uh, that was the one where Lamar got all the pressure in his face. Um, another one where the defender just made a really good play. Uh, Devin DuVernay could have had it, but it's like Devin DuVernay grabbed it, but the defender, he was all over it too. And just, yeah. Defender made a good play on it. Uh, then, of course, there was the catch. And what was his other target? I, I don't even remember what the fifth one was. I was trying to remember them all off the top of my head. 
Uh, oh, Tylen Wallace, he had a catch. I don't even, I don't remember. Drake had a catch, had two targets. There was one uh, where Lamar, Lamar either either overthrew him a little bit or underthrew Ken Drake. I want to say he overthrew. I forgot, but it, it was not on the money from Lamar. It was on a little check down pass, but Lamar just he just straight up missed him. Uh, Pat Ricard, he had one target, and we 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 all remember what that target was. So. Yeah, man, uh, that was the game. Um, still wondering who is gonna be that steps up, who comes alive, who uh, at, as a pass catcher, as another playmaker for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, in this game, in the run game, it was Kenyon Drake, so that was a beautiful thing to see. Mark Andrews continued, but they were like, "Oh, they they said Devin who? Devin Duvernay? Oh, he ain't about to go off on us. Who else is gonna be?" So, um, yeah, man, it's, it's we've been saying this way before this loss, way before any of the other losses. We just, I would love it to be to where every it's not everything being on Lamar, where he don't have to make these miracle plays all the time, uh, where it can be somebody. Else. Now, one thing that I think about, and we're going to get into this a little bit more uh, throughout the week. One thing that I was thinking about, I wonder, because um, obviously if you ask anybody, hey, who's Lamar's number one target? And, and the, the commentators were saying it. They were like, man, this, this offense is just nothing but tight ends. And that's it. All the passes are going to the tight ends. But obviously if you ask anybody, who's Lamar Jackson's number one target? They say, hey, Mark Andrews, of course, Mark Andrews. Um, but I wonder, because Lamar Jackson, really throughout his whole career as a Baltimore Raven, Miles Boykin, he wasn't really out there too much. So really, throughout Lamar Jackson's career as a Raven, all of his receivers have been little guys, man. All of them. Had Hollywood, Willie Sneed, um, who else? James Prochet, Devin Duvernay. Um, I know I'm missing. Now Sammy, Sammy was over six foot, but he wasn't on the field. Rashad Bateman, he's over six foot, but he he been hurt. Miles Boykin was 6'5". He wasn't ever out there. So, he, there's Bryant. <laughs> Goodness gracious, there's Bryant. Ooh. And I, every time I think about the there's Bryant, I'm, like, I'm thinking like, man, I remember being so excited for that signing. And that just showed me how, that just reminded me how rough it was uh, for Ravens at the receiver position. But I just, my thing is, I, I just want the Ravens to, that's why when there were rumors about like, oh, Cole Beasley, um, the one from the Bucks, Scotty Miller. I'm just like, no, man. I, I don't want the Ravens to go get another little wide receiver, man. T.Y. Hill and when people talked about, I just, no, man. I, I want them to get somebody with some size, uh, somebody who liked that, like, because I, I just, I feel like they just, it's, it's just like a bunch of slot receivers that they got. And when, like, for that, it's like when you got a bunch of smaller receivers, that makes everything that much tougher. Like, these receivers, they got to be open, like, open, open uh, for you to get them the ball. Um, and the, the, the catch radius is a lot smaller. Um, I just wish that the Ravens would have gotten somebody, like, like that, but somebody who got some good size on them, too. Or somebody who plays up to a bigger size than they are. Um, but... I mean, it is what it is, man. Uh, the Ravens are 3-3. Three and three. They clearly have a lot of work to do. A lot. Um, the season is definitely not over. The season is obviously not done. Um, they got a long way to go. Well, they got 11 games left. Yeah, wow. We already been through six games. Wow. It's going by fast. It goes by super fast. But anyway, we'll see how they bounce back, man. Um, this team is just... Very undisciplined in so many ways. Uh, they have, they got to improve. It starts at the top, but it trickles down to everybody. Um, so John Harbaugh, he got to improve with just grabbing his team by by the the, the, the horns and say, "Hey, like y'all got to be a lot better than this." And through some of the stuff this season has been on him. This game, it was not on John Harbaugh. In my opinion, it was not on John Harbaugh. 
You know, say some Greg Roman stuff. Yeah, a little bit on Greg Roman. Cause just, just it, the part that would be on Greg Roman to me would be the personnel. It would be the personnel, um, especially in like it's it's clutch time, uh, and it's Ricard going out for a route. Like I understand he's out there a lot to block and what, but anyway, um, that was still a bad bad decision by Lamar. Just because it was Pat Ricard out there on the route, it still doesn't take away that it was a bad decision by Lamar. Um, but I just thinking about the personnel. Uh, the Ravens still second half. They they just keep stalling out, man. They keep stalling out. They keep giving up these leads. Um, it's like nothing is safe with the Ravens. Nothing is safe. Um, but yeah, so we talked about Greg Roman, uh, Mike McDonald, um, the defense. They they got to get some consistency. Because, again, numbers-wise, stats-wise, minus the touchdowns, of course, but numbers-wise, yards-wise, it's like, oh, hey, okay, there we go. But situational-wise, it's got to be better. It's got to be better. Lamar Jackson, the decision-making, it's got to be better. And the touch, the touch, it's got to be better. Because, again, close, especially close games like these, Last week, too. Close game. Those missed opportunities, they will come back to bite you in the butt. If you miss like how he missed to, 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 to Andrews in this game on what would have been a huge chunk play. Came back to bite them in the butt. And then, of course, the interception that he threw to, to, to record. Um, but Love got it. Bit them in the butt right away because it gave the Giants field position. Gave them the ball with good field position. Boom, they score right away. So if he had he thrown that away, it's like all right, defense, hold it down, give the giant, give the Giants a longer field to have to get go, uh, get down, work through whatever. Okay, but no man, and do it. Offensive line, I wish Lamar could have consistent protection. That would make stuff a bit easier. Um, running game. Uh, well, today was good. Overall, it's been very inconsistent. Um, you just you never know who's gonna be good that day. Uh, it was nice today though to see somebody other than Lamar have a good running game. It was nice. I think this is Ravens' first hundred yard rusher besides Lamar. Um, that was nice to see. It's refreshing to see again. Refreshing to see somebody else. Wide receiver. Um, Still hope, hoping Bateman can be back this week. Not expecting it, but hoping. Um, and just hope that somebody else can can be the guy. Somebody else can contribute. And again, whether it's on Lamar, whether it's on the receivers themselves, whatever it is, the scheme. Uh, again, it's probably a mix of all three at different times. Um, but yeah, man. So... <sighs> but yeah. Anyway, tough loss, but not the end of the season. Um, so yeah, that's that. Love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Ravens are still technically in first place with the Bengals in the AFC North. They're not a first place team right now. They really not the the Ravens. Um, so I mean, I've seen people say, "Oh, we're still in first place." Yeah, they are, but is this really a first place team? Do you really think so? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, uh, well, actually, in in AFC North, yeah, they probably are, because Bengals been, uh, Browns been, uh, Steelers been, uh, exactly like that. That's a perfect way to describe it. But anyway, love y'all. Appreciate y'all watching. Uh, thank you, and let's have a great week. We out.